Next, what we'd like to talk about is how we're going to handle uh, many-to-one relationships. And we're going to use a facility that Rails calls nested resources. And the, the idea here is, is that when we have resources that are in a one-to-many relationship, and uh, for these series of examples, I'm going to use the example of our churches table and that has a one-to-many relationship between that and our our services table so let's just see and and so normally when we're trying to update services or add new services they are always going to be associated back with the churches table so unlike what we've done so far with our, our user resource, we don't want to have a separate page, web page, to enter a service. We always want to enter a service in the context of a church. And, and so we, we, they are tied together, and, and that's why it's called a nested resource, because the services resource is always tied to a, a church resource. Uh, if you think about what's in your, your config uh, routes file, right now you have uh, some lines like, um, like this, resources, churches, and uh, resources, services. And what these two lines do if you'll remember, is they make specific routes available. That being uh, from the, the church's uh, case here. So we'll go down here first. Uh, there is a slash churches slash uh, ID. If we need that ID or slash churches depending upon if it's an index or a show, a new or edit or so forth. And there is a similar one for services. We have slash services and that potential ID. Now the problem is we know because of the way our services is that there has to be a connection back to, to the churches. There, there needs to be some sort of a foreign key in this that uh, we've called church ID that lets us know which church that particular service is associated with. And the, the URL, the route to our controller, does not have anything about our church ID. And so we would have to have the user in the web page for the service include that church ID and how many times do you want some user to have to memorize the ID of a church well, that's a really bad interface we would like that to be done behind the closed doors that it's completely hidden from from the uh, website user and so then we would have to do something like a drop down list of all the churches that the service could be a part of and map that list to the particular church ID and, and so forth that is a, a pretty sophisticated task so what we're going to do I instead is we're gonna want to have a different URL uh, instead and so we're going to want to combine these two together so that we can include both the church and the service information. And that is our nesting. So we have our, our churches first. And notice I'm going to slightly change this to church ID right? because this is the ID that applies to the church. And then I'm going to go services. And this is... I can't write over there. Uh, so this wraps around right there. What comes around there is the ID. And this is the service ID as opposed to the church ID. Now this URL includes both this, all the information for the service 
and all the information from the church, right? We got this church ID right here. And so we have the ability to do that. And, and the way we do that is really simple. Here in the, the routes file, what we're going to do, the change that we're going to make is we are going to nest this service resource inside the church. And we do that quite simply by putting uh, do end block. So, and of course, this would be indented a little bit here then. Now, the service resource is always associated with the church. It has to be created in the context of a, a church and it is accessed in the context of a church. We never access it independently uh, of the church. And, and so, this URL right here nests those really um, nicely because now we have both those pieces of information and the, the website user doesn't have to know which ID we need for the church because it's built into the URL that we've already provided for them.